Hi, we are back with another video on the topic what is Kubernetes. Before we deep dive, please make sure you subscribe to Scaler's YouTube channel and don't forget to turn on the bell notification icon. If you have any doubts, feel free to drop a comment below. What is Kubernetes? Hi everyone, are you one of those who quite often hear the word Kubernetes? Well, we know everyone around you is talking about Kubernetes. And if you are the clueless one, you have jumped into the right video today. With the whole universe things to learn, it's important to kickstart the process with the essentials. So in today's session, we are going to study Kubernetes from the basics. Before diving into the topic, let's quickly have a look at our today's agenda. First, what is Kubernetes? Second, the origin of Kubernetes. Third, how does Kubernetes work? Fourth, why do you need Kubernetes? And fifth, use case of Kubernetes. So, what is Kubernetes? In technical terms, Kubernetes is a portal, an open source platform for managing containerized workloads and services that facilitate declarative configuration, letting you run a distributed system resiliently with scaling of your application. Well, that's too complicated to understand. Let's simplify. Kubernetes is a container or chester with respect to the software that ensures each container is positioned correctly to work together. Just like the conductor manages every minute detail in the orchestra. The same way the Kubernetes platform makes sure that the services are running smoothly in the way an app developer wants. Before we go into more details, let's understand the origin or the history of Kubernetes. Let's get started. History of Kubernetes. First introduced in June 2014, Kubernetes is an open source container initially designed and developed by Joe Beda, Bridan Burns, and Craig McLeuke. Later, they were joined by other engineers from Google, including Brian Grant and Tim Hawken. Now the Kubernetes is maintained by the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Over the years, the overall design and development process of Kubernetes was highly inspired by the Google Brog system. Every week, Google generates more than 2 billion container deployments powered by Borg, its internal platform. This project was originally named the Project 7 of 9 where the seven spokes in the Kubernetes logo show its significance. One of the companies that worked with Google on this project was Red Hat, that later became the second leading contributor for the Kubernetes upstream project. Since its original release in 2014, there have been several updates in the technology. However, the latest Kubernetes version was released on 4th August 2021. Now, as we have had enough discussion about Kubernetes and its origin, it's time to introduce how it works. So, without skipping any part, keep on watching the video till the end. How does Kubernetes work? Undoubtedly, Kubernetes is one of the most prominent technologies in the modern world. It is specifically designed to make managing microservices clusters of containerized applications automated and reliable. However, beneath this easy notion is a world of complexities. Let's know about them one by one. First, cluster structure master nodes. Within the cluster, there are different types of nodes. The very first node is known as the master node. There are primarily multiple master nodes that serve as the brains of the operations. Then comes your worker nodes or nodes. In addition to master nodes, Kubernetes has worker nodes in the charge of running the actual workloads. Both master nodes and the worker nodes together make the control plane that promotes easy functioning. The control plane or API. Every time you want to chat with the Kubernetes cluster, you would have to go through the API server. All the operations against pods are executed through the API server. Controller Manager A controller manager is a sort of a big overwatching manager that manages a bunch of processes. The controller manager is responsible for ensuring that the shared state of operator is working as expected. Scheduler The scheduler is in charge of figuring out where the pause should run and that's kind of a big deal as to how the details are determined may vary based upon the characteristics of pods and the available nodes. The scheduler is responsible for watching over the given task and ensuring the node's performance. Then comes your ETCD. ETCD is 
basically the brain of the Kubernetes. ETCD is a distributed object store that acts as the database of records for the configuration and state of the entire cluster. So all of the cluster states will be stored in ETCD as a key value store and then the modifications can be made by talking to the controller manager. Moving forward, Kubelet. Kubelet is the thing that actually runs the pods. Its core purpose is to enforce the directives coming from the head node and report back the actual condition of the worker load. It also updates information with the cluster. Moving forward, Kube Proxy. The Kube Proxy is responsible for managing the traffic coming into a node from the service later. It requests work to the suitable container. With this, we land on our next topic that is the need for Kubernetes. Why do you need Kubernetes? If you are a technological person, you must have encountered Kubernetes in the past. Over the period, Kubernetes have become hugely popular to the extent that developers feel their application pipeline is outdated if they don't use Kubernetes. Let's deeply understand the various reasons why you need Kubernetes. Container Orchestration Containers are an efficient choice that enables you to package and deploy services, ensure effective resource utilization, and an incredibly lightweight in creation. But when we look into the real picture, one can end up with hundreds and thousands of containers that need to be deployed and managed safely. Don't you think the containers should be able to scale up and scale down as per the demand, provide communication, round cluster, or make them fault tolerant themselves? Well, the answer to all these is Kubernetes. These are the tools that sit on the top of containers and promote easy functioning. Great for multi-cloud adoption. With the increasing popularity of microservice architecture, there's no surprise that containers and the tools that are used to manage them have become so popular. The microservice architecture is responsible for splitting applications into smaller components with containers that can be run on various cloud environments. Better management of your applications. The breaking down of applications into smaller parts can be managed through Kubernetes, promoting easy code management and test specific inputs and outputs. Features such as automated rollouts and self-hearing effectively work the container for you. The various benefits of Kubernetes. First, Kubernetes can be used for the deployment of your services or to enable new release without downtime. Second, Kubernetes technology is portable that could be run on the public as well as a private cloud. Third, Kubernetes can be used to promote almost all needs. All you have to do is to choose a well-defined module and customize additional features as per your requirements and plugin. Fourth, one of the most appreciated features of Kubernetes is the self-healing feature, which has to be included right from the start. Fifth, Another exciting feature that will be soon be added to Kubernetes is self-adaption. Sixth, factors such as fault tolerance, scaling scheduling, and zero downtime adds significant value to the Kubernetes. Seventh, Kubernetes promotes the safety of confidential information and stores it safely. Eighth, Kubernetes is capable of running in a hybrid as well as an on-premise environment. Apart from these, there are many other benefits of Kubernetes, such as ease of access, service discovery, and many more that makes this technology open for more people. Now, when you have understood this need, it's time to understand when you should use it. The use cases of Kubernetes. Over the years, the adoption of Kubernetes has grown immensely from 27% in 2018 to 48% in 2019. Yes, the number is enormous, which makes it one of the widely used containers orchestration tools. Keep on watching to see what benefits does Kubernetes bring to you. First, learning Kubernetes by deploying a simple app. There are real life examples where the power of Kubernetes can be used to deploy apps. Let us break down this through an example of better understanding. Imagine there is a creative agency developing a web page for the pharmaceutical industry. Every medicine presented on the web page will have a dedicated page with information about the medication, including the dodge, description, effects, impacts, etc. In such a scenario, the Kubernetes will come as a savior as it will efficiently manage the cluster through better resource allocation. Second, 
if your application uses a microservice architecture. If you are more gravitated towards a microservice architecture or looking to transition towards it, the chances are that you already use Docker, a software to containerize your applications. For such purposes, Kubernetes suits all needs. Remember, microservice is not always the best choice, but it offers excellent advantages when the microservice architecture is chosen with Kubernetes. It manages the entire working process, simplifies it, and considerably reduces the work needed to run the app. Third, lift and shift. Lift and shift refer to the recently occurring scenario since the software is now being transferred from on-premise infrastructure to cloud solutions. Let's understand the concept of lift and shift through an example. Say we have an application deployed on physical servers in a classical data center. For specific reasons, it has been decided to move it to the cloud technology to big pods in k -8s. So the shifting of applications working outside the cloud and further transferring it to the big pods in Kubernetes indicates the lift and shift methodology. Fourth, if you are suffering from slow development and deployment, there may be instances when you cannot meet the customer's demand. If yes, then Kubernetes might help you in such a scenario. Rather than employing a team of professionals wasting their time in analyzing problems, Kubernetes can effectively manage the situation. Fifth, computing power for the resource-hungry task. Recently, the Guinness World Recording computing pie was broken by a Google employee who reached 31.4 trillion digits. The number is vast, which requires huge computing power. What if the Kubernetes technology manages this calculation? With Kubernetes, you will be required to write a program to perform the calculations, whereas Kubernetes will effectively handle everything else. Sixth, lower infrastructure cost. In order to ensure that your clusters always have enough resources to meet the demands of the running applications, Kubernetes uses efficient resource management that lowers the cloud infrastructure cost. Seventh, CI or CD software development cycle. Kubernetes have highly benefited from continuous integration, continuous development. Whether it's for developing the new versions for testing the releases, Kubernetes make the processes easy and manageable. Summing up, with this, we end today's session here. Now, when you have learned what Kubernetes is, how it works and its uses, we would love to hear your views about the same in the comment section below. If you guys have any queries or questions about what we discussed just now, you can leave them below in the chat box. In today's session, we deeply discussed Kubernetes, its history and how it works. Additionally, we also learned about why you need Kubernetes and used cases of Kubernetes. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to like and share this video. For any queries, comment below and we will get right back to you. Thank you.